G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game between Nakamura RTS, who spawns in the west of the map, playing the Delhi Sultanate. His opponent, hailing from Age of Empires 2, it's ACCM, who spawns in the east of the map, playing the Chinese. The map that we're playing on today is Black Forest, and the Black Forest map is a map that I actually haven't seen in quite some time, so I'm curious to see exactly how it spawns. Some very nice fish spawns behind the base here for ACCM. We'll take a look at Nakamura and see whether he's got something similar. He does indeed have something similar. But today in this game, we're going to be breaking down the uh, build order of Nakamura. So for anybody who's unfamiliar with Nakamura, I'm going to leave a link in the description to his YouTube channel. So you can check out some of his build orders. Uh, because he's released a whole bunch of content as well for Age of Empires 4. So I encourage you to go over there, check it out if you like what you see today. So let's talk a little bit about Black Forest, the way that Black Forest plays and why it's so important to start off water. So water in Age of Empires 4 is one of those difficult things where it's like, do you go water or do you not go water? And the question to that answer, or sorry, rather the answer to that question is unfortunately, it depends. But on the Black Forest map, you always want to go water. And the reason why you always want to go water is because your water is safe. There's nothing your enemy can do to really stop you from going water. Now, obviously they could sneak a villager. They could put a dock down here. They could do the same thing up over on this side as well. Very, very possible. But they're not going to do that. It's because it's Black Forest. And there's an unwritten rule that on Black Forest, you have your pond, I'll have mine, and we'll call it a day. The reason why it's so strong doing that on Black Forest, uh, so doing this water boom, is because essentially this is a second town center that you have just paid 150 wood for. So normally you would be paying uh, 700 resources for it. Now you're only paying 150 resources for it. And your villagers that you pay 50 food for, well, now you're making fishing boats and they only cost 60 wood. So that is why you want to be doing that. And in addition to that, you also have deep water fish, which are the fastest gathering for, uh, source of food in the game. Full stop. There's, there's no caveat to that. that it, they are the fastest source of food gathering in the game which is why it is so important that you open, just like both of these players did, going with some early water. Now, one of the things to note, Nakamura is definitely going for a more of a greedy build, and I do like this from Nakamura. Uh, one of the things I would love to see Nakamura do is stay for a much longer age one. I would really love to see that because with the Delhi, you have the ability to wall with your barracks units so if you have infantry so you, you create a barracks you can do that in the first age you can make a whole bunch of spears and then you can war with them you don't have to have idle time as your villager walks to the middle of the map so i would love to see him at, at this point just take all of these villagers put them on throw them onto wood out over here and drop down a barracks and then start walling like a madman i want to see walls here walls here walls over here that would be absolutely insane but speaking of the map i just want to talk about one thing in particular and it's this land or this trading post right here so as we get closer and closer to the release of age of empires 4 which if you're watching this on youtube it's probably happened by now uh we actually see accm taking a little bit of a page out of fat slob's book you heard it here first accm is actually fat slob it is happening accm moving up insane walls coming out from accm right now he is literally going across the entire map to wall this. Ooh, ACCM, aka AoEbuilds.com, aka Fat Slob. Uh, <laughs> oh my lord. Um, and so I, I would love to see uh, something similar coming out from uh, Nakamura. But one of the things to note is that the trading post has spawned very favorably for Nakamura. Like incredibly favorably. So he, if he wanted to in the late game, he's going to be able to drop down a market like right here and trade all the way to here he can stonewall right there and he's so safe like nothing is ever going to break his spirits when he's doing that and you, you know you look at uh at uh, accm and he's going to be over here and he's going to have no access to a trading post this is huge so ideally this trading post should be spawning like somewhere around here in the middle somewhere a bit more fair but uh, nonetheless we'll keep riding with nakamura and see how he does gonna be dropping down the dome of the faith Got a lot of villagers on this as well. Seven villagers in the early game. That's quite a fair bit. Fair chunk of change, but keep in mind here, obviously, is on water as well. 26 villagers now for Nakamura as well. So for anybody wondering about Delhi, they're a little bit... I would say they are probably the weirdest of the bunch uh, when it comes to... Oh, I've just been advised. Apparently, he's got one to the south. Let me take a look. One to the south. I do not see one to the south. 
There's none to the south, unless I'm blind. There's one trading post. There's a boar. There's a sacred sign. Doesn't look like it. I think that's the only trading post that's there. Um, and so, with with the Delhi, so they're probably the weirdest out of all the civs. Pro uh, up there with the Mongols. If I had to create like a weird list, it's like Delhi and the Mongols that are like leading it, and then the French and the English are on the other end, and every other civ's kind of in between. And what I mean by that is they just play so differently. So, as an example, if we take a look right now at his mill, Nakamura's mill, he is getting two different upgrades, and he doesn't have to pay for them. They're completely free. And the only thing is that they actually take a really long time to, to research. So how do you reduce the research time? Well, I'm glad you asked. You need to have one of these bad boys, a mosque. Uh, so you can see right here, a mosque, it's a religious building. Uh, it is it, The first one provides a free scholar and it reduces the rate or it reduces the speed of those uh, subsequent uh, research technologies. And you can add more and more uh, scholars into your mosque so you can see it can hold a total of three then you'll need to create a new mosque if you want to add more than that and that's going to subsequently reduce each uh, each uh, a percentage of your research so when you add a second scholar we take a look here okay it's at four minutes and five seconds the second scholar is about to come through right now let's watch when it goes inside uh, is it going to go is it going to go into the right oh no oh no is, is is he gonna is he doing something cheeky oh he's doing something cheeky all right okay i like it i like it going for a little bit of a sacred site early in the game but having a bit of a difficult time because uh, the scout has come out with just absolute perfect timing I, I i hate this you know this happened to me in the last game that i played it was like right as i dropped my town center my enemy's army like literally walked in onto the town center i'm like really i literally just dropped my town center there like ah so annoying uh, so going to be heading back into there. Uh, we'll take a look at the mill now. So it was at 4 minutes and 5 seconds. Now it's down to 3 minutes and 22 seconds. So you can see decent sized drop off right there. Uh, and that is how you're going to be reducing the time it takes to actually uh, to take or to do this research rather. Uh, another stable or another military production building going to be going down for Nakamura. He's got the tri uh, military production buildings out now. Double walls already down for ACCM really taking a... Um, you know, a, a page out of Fat Slob's book right here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, going to continue moving on. We'll take a look over at Naka, or at, uh, at ACCM. Uh, let's see what we've got. Here we go. Uh, so ACCM now going to be thinking about uh, dropping his... Does he have that second town center just yet? Doesn't look like he's got a second town center just yet. Um, a lot of villages, though, are on stone. And one of the things to note is you're going to need at least 300 stone to be dropping that town center. Now, he has accessed or has begun his dynasty. So for the Chinese, they've got access to dynasties. And the very first dynasty that you've got access to uh, with the Chinese dynasty is the Song dynasty. So you start with one, but then you move on to the Song dynasty. And that's going to reduce the time it takes for you to train villagers. We take a look here, and you can see that his villagers only take 13 seconds. So if you've got two town centers, that's essentially a three town center boom. And with that, it, it means that you're able to do a much more effective boom. Now, okay, I thought he was going to be using this stone to um, to make town centers. He's using this stone to make stone walls. <sighs> I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> I should have known. Sacred Site now going to be captured up here uh, for Nakamura. We'll take a look over from his perspective, see how he's doing. Uh, he's got a wall up to the north. But keep in mind, though, Sacred Sites are locked behind the walls. Uh, of his uh, of his enemy's walls. And it's going to be a bit difficult for him to do that. Going to be going up to the third age himself, going up with the House of Learning here as well. 11 villagers going to be constructing that one, so really prioritizing that. Now, one of the things to note is that um, even though they are technically the Delhi Sultanate, and a lot of people would think, okay, well, surely they would speak a, a language, you know, that's, that's really common in India right now, right? Wrong. They don't. They speak Farsi. Uh, so for anybody who's who's unfamiliar, I am able to speak Farsi, and <laughs> whenever I like, I'm I, I'm sitting here casting, and I just heard these guys, 
and all I can hear is Chikar Mikuni, which means what are you doing? <laughs> and it's so funny. It's like it's it's in the most hilarious voice. Uh, and it's it's just it's it's very off-putting because it's like in my right ear I've just got a guy yelling, "What are you doing?" <laughs> the Chinese, it's a, it's uh, it's it's a little bit easy with the Chinese because to be honest, the voice actor that they got to do the Chinese, uh, not the best voice actor. Let's just say that. So it's, it doesn't really trigger me as much with with the Chinese one, but the the Farsi one is very very good. Uh, but uh, yes, he's. Uh, they, they did a great job with that. Uh, they, they do speak fast. Yeah, I actually remember when Age of Empires 4 was initially sort of coming out and people didn't really know um, too much about it. We saw the Abbasids going up against the Delhi and we could hear Persian and everyone assumed that the Abbasids were going to be a Persian civilization. And everyone's like, that's not right. They, do, they don't speak Persian. And it was actually the, the, um, the Delhi voices that we were hearing and we just didn't realize at the time. So very, very um, interesting, you know, how, how it sort of evolves. But for anybody unfamiliar, they did actually speak uh, Farsi or, or Persian, uh, as, as we call it these days, uh, back in those days. Um, it, it is still, there, there are still pockets of the, uh, of the Persian community uh, that do live in India. But uh, yeah, nowhere near as popular as it once was. Um, but uh, now we see that there's a, a little bit of an expansion going now down for Nakamura 3. Three blacksmiths. Just just your casual three blacksmiths. I take that back. Four blacksmiths. <laughs> Four blacksmiths. Excuse me. Just uh, gonna need to take a sip of my Red Bull. Throat running a little bit dry. You know when you don't stream for so long and all of a sudden you go back into streaming? Your, your throat gets a little bit... What's the word? A little bit dry, I guess. A, a little bit strep, I think it's called. But uh, this, this Red Bull should fix it up. All right, hopefully that's a little bit better now. Saw, yeah, that's it. All right, so definitely in, in on Black Forest, it's a bit more of a booming game uh, that we've got here. We'll take a look over at ACCM, see what he's up to. Still under attack over here. This scout going to be working its way through this wall. And that's the reason why we're not going to be watching him because this scout is going to be here for probably the next week or so as it continues to attack these walls. And I just don't want to listen to that. ACCM actually out on the map. Going to be able to secure lots of hunts. This is a, a great uh, advantage for taking the majority of the map. Typically in Age of Empires 4, your map is going to have your deer very close to your spawning town center. But one of the things to note on this map is that the deer are out on the map. They're out in the middle. So we've got one hunt here, one hunt in the middle, one hunt down to the south, and then one hunt very far up north. And now we've got a couple of lancers coming out now for Nakamura. Uh, we've got uh, ACCM reaching the third age. Let's take a look and see if we can spot his landmark going up to the clockwork tower the or the uh sorry the astronomical clock tower why do i call it the clockwork tower i think those are, they're called clock tower bombards that sort of gets in your head uh so when it comes to his boom i, I would have loved to have seen accm go for a bit of a bigger boom so maybe a two dock boom here would have been fine because one of the things to note is this is nowhere near enough fishing boats to actually ever exhaust this so for anybody unfamiliar with the mechanics of the deep water fish they respawn so the deep, the shoreline fish do not respawn. The deep water fish do. So you can get them from 2,000 down to zero. You wait a couple minutes and they're back up to 500 and then 1,000 and then 1,500 and then finally 2,000 again. And so you can cycle between them. If you've got, uh, you know, 15 boats, it should still be able to, su to support that quite easily. Uh, so that's one of the things to take note of. Nakamura are going to be able to saturate a little bit better on his part uh, than his opponent is. Uh, Nakamura doing a pretty decent job of just scouting. Uh, this out. So keep in mind, even though he doesn't have walls up, he's got scouts out on the map, and that's really going to give him that information that you know there's uh, there's no units going to be coming through here potentially. Obviously, that's not as effective as having a wall up uh, by any means, but you know at the same time, it's still pretty decent. Uh, Nakamura now reaching the fourth age. We'll take a look and see exactly which landmark he's gone up with. It looks like he has gone up with. I uh, don't see it. Is it? It's not that one. It's not that one. Do you guys see it? Yell if you see it. There it is. The Hisar Academy. The Hisar Academy generates constantly generates food based on total number of technologies researched. The research rate of buildings within influence of the mosque or a madrasa is increased by 12.5% for each garrison scholar in all mosques or madrasas. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. So the Hisar Academy is a, a, a landmark that, in my opinion, 
isn't the best landmark. And the reason why is because it gives you infinite food, right? You don't need infinite food. You already have infinite food through your farms. You need gold real bad. And so that's why I don't think like this landmark really, in, in my opinion, hits home all that much uh, when you compare it over to the other landmark. Now, I don't remember the exact name of that landmark, but um, this is, in, in my opinion, this one is the less superior landmark. We'll take a look over at ACCM. We'll see how he's doing, what he's up to over on his side of the map. ACCM just doing casual ACM, ACCM things, just triple stone walling the middle. Still got a single stone wall to the bottom, but go, going with the double stone wall up the top. And I think it's at this point in the game, I'm probably thinking, hold on a minute, maybe we should, maybe we should speed this up. Because it's, it's starting to get to that point where it's like, it's a little bit concerning. It's like, I see a lot of walls coming out and I don't see a lot of units. And ACCM is going for like, he's getting a keep down. He's like, he's playing defensively, even though his enemy is literally doing nothing right now. So like, you look from his line of sight, ACCM is like going absolute, he's playing like the dream game right now with China. It, it, it's basically like, he is just making everything. He's got one, two, three TCs. He's got his dynasty to make faster villages. Actually, I take that back because he's up to the next dynasty now. He's going to be dropping down the spirit way to go Imperial as well. It's like he's literally just collecting every single landmark that there is in the game. And then, I don't know, just like having it. He's having a fun time. 111 villages at the moment for ACCM. Let's take a look over at his enemy. 67 villages. So a little bit of a, a villager lead for ACCM over Nakamura. And when I say a little bit, that's quite significant. Still a couple sheep left now for Nakamura. Uh, thank you, Elbots, for stopping by, mate. Great to see you here. Good to, good to have you here. And uh, and now Nakamura. Uh, what I would love to see from Nakamura is a little bit of pressure put on his enemy. So even if you just get like one trebuchet out or one bomb, one bombard cannon and start sieging through the stone walls. Just make your enemy have to respond because if they just keep sitting over here with like their three TCs booming up, they're going to hit 200 villages and they're going to have all the resources and they're probably just going to win the game. And so you really have to like... I don't know, I, I always feel like you kind of want, want to force your opponent to make units, but at the same time, you can always go for like a death push as well. I'm a big fan of death pushes. Against the Chinese, it's a little bit more dangerous just because of how many landmarks they've got. So with, with a death push, the idea is that you're going to actually kill your enemy completely. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six landmarks that you're going to need to kill. It's a lot of landmarks that you're going to need to kill if you try and do that. It gives them a lot of time to potentially expand out. Is this real time arts vex text? Yes, my friend. Yes, it is. Now we've got a couple of siege units coming out. The bombard is coming out. Some pretty decent timing on this. I'd love to see them beginning to push up. Now I actually unbound the speed keys uh, from my my hotkeys. At least I'm pretty sure I did. Hold on. Let me let me double check. I'm going to check and see in my in my uh, controls what the keys are for speed. Let me go all the way down to the bottom. All right. There it is. Equals and minus. All right. So we're going to speed things up a little bit over here. All right. There we go. Now we're looking good. Uh, I could bring it down on the UI, but the reason I don't want to is because I don't want to re reveal the game time to you guys. Bombards are now, <laughs> now preparing. This is looking more and more like a no-rush game. A couple of elephants now on the south. A couple of elephants up to the north. This is really smart. He needs to be splitting, and that's exactly what he's doing. Do not fight down a single corridor. And so, so smart by Nakamura going around. He says, you know what? You've got walls. I don't even need to see your walls. Wait, did Nakamura just turn around? Don't do it. No, Nakamura, not like that. Uh, that's too slow. That's the right speed right there. Going to be moving out and grabbing this relic. Look how fast that scholar moves. Uh, that scholar's moving so fast, I thought that the game speed was too high. It's just got an upgrade that makes it move a lot faster. And we don't see any action towards the middle just yet. Trading now beginning with Nakamura. We talked about this before. 32 gold. His market is not all the way at the back, but probably about as far back as he can get. That monk is absolutely moving at double time. Look at that. Look at the monk go right now. Look at how, look how speedy he is. Let's like let's get some cinematic mode on this right here. Oh, wrong button. Oh, hold on. Uh, uh, uh sorry. Uh, uh. All right, there we go. All right, we're in. This is uh, like, is that even legal? Are you allowed to run that fast? Didn't didn't your parents tell you about running with scissors when you were a child? Look at that thing go. He is just speeding along. 
I could watch him all day. He's like a marathon runner with that relic. <laughs> Look out. He's like, hey, wait, get out of the way. <laughs> he's like, hey, I got a relic here. Watch out. Boom. There you guys go. That's what it looks like when you've got a giant relic and you run. Uh, Nakamura now going to be dropping down some emergency houses, looking to get them up and still just sort of just chilling out. Let's take a look how he's doing relatively well down towards the south, relatively well up towards the north. And, uh, and now going to be continuing these trade up to 32 gold for them. How many traders does he have out? He's got five traders. Going to keep making more. Units coming in. Does ACCM? ACCM has now made some units. Going for Uh That is uh, the, the unique Chinese um, ranged unit that you can make. Uh, I would love to see Grenadiers. Oh my god, he made Grenadiers. Oh my god. Okay. 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 We have got a lot a lot to talk about right now. Grenadiers are actually amazing. So I, I did a video recently. You guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably seen that video. It's every unique unit in Age of Empires 4. Okay. You know what is absolutely wild? Grenadiers. Like, they are legit insane, dude. Oh my lord. Oh, I'm so excited to actually watch these in action. All right, ACCM looking to finally move on to the defense now. Not that he hasn't been playing the defense since the third minute. Nakamura now going to be pushing in. And a lot of elephants here. This is actually looking pretty darn decent for uh, for Nakamura. But my main concern, as I mentioned, it's it's going to be those, uh, those grenadiers. Grenadiers now moving out. Let's take a look as they reach for their grenades and throw them back. Going to be looking to do a couple of damage... A bit Bit, bit amount of damage onto the uh, the bombards there, managing to get out. Now the elephant's going to be moving forward. Castle on the back line, going to be looking to defend. Let's get into that beautiful cinematic mode. As now we see a couple of elephants saying, you know what? We're just going to we're just going to go around the wall. We don't need to worry about the the front gate. Kind of stuffing up the pathing there. Looks like the front gate is actually going to be going down despite that. And now those elephants coming in, going to be looking to collapse in on this army, and ACCM doing his best to run away. Getting underneath that beautiful landmark. We see it right there. That is a unique Chinese landmark that increases the HP of all walls uh, by a significant amount. Look how quickly just burns through this keep, though, going down completely. All those grenades now coming out. We see that the Chinese do have that beautiful gunpowder um, that other civilizations have access to, but just not as much. And uh, one of the big things is ACCM needs to get more buildings out right now. He has got nowhere near enough buildings. You see all these units that are flooding in. It's just, it's nowhere near enough. Uh, so it looks like he's only got just, a, you know, seven archery ranges at the moment. That Those are rookie numbers. You need to bump those numbers up, ACCM. And now we've got a little bit of a push happening right now because it looks like Nakamura is about to break through. He's got a lot of upgrades here. War elephants, tower war elephants, bombards on the back line. A keep going to be going down in the middle to solidify, uh, to solidify this and... ACCM in a bit of a difficult spot. Another keep on the back line going to be going down here. Keep in mind, his existing keep is here, so he's going to have double keeps back here. These guys do have that all-important hand cannon to try and focus down these units. We see more keeps going up, and a little bit of a difficult spot now for ACCM because he is under attack from all angles. Towards the north, he does have these walls up. He, towards the south, he's gone. He's got, created a few more. Got a couple of units down here as well. Needs to bring them back right now. Let's take a look over at his enemy, Nakamura, and see what line of sight he spots. And he is just entering through the front gate. He said, hey, you don't, you know what? Don't even bother me. What I would love to see from Nakamura right now at this point, delete some villages and just really get a whole bit, big bit of army out there. You got so many resources in the bank right now. You're in a great spot. So that's, that's what you want to do. More bombards now coming out. Now, I don't think these are actually clock tower bombards. Uh, you know what? They're not clock tower bombards because he's not playing Chinese. Uh, but uh, nonetheless... Uh, there's no point for him to actually back out right here. He's got him on the ropes, uh, and he really needs to push. Taking down that bombard, you see how quickly he eva evaporates it. Going to continue pushing up now. Three bombards just taking off shots and so quickly dealing with this. Take a look at the health down here. 3,300, down to 1,700. They're healing it up slowly. It might be another two more volleys that they need to actually finish this one off. 700, 800, 900. Will it be two? I think it's just going to be this volley. They should kill it. They do indeed kill it on this volley. Volley. And uh, it's a difficult spot now for ACCM because Nakamura is going to continue pushing in. We'll take off your line of sight so you'll be able to see what's happening. More bombards coming in behind this. Sitting up pretty close to max population. I think we actually do see some villager deletes. I just did see these numbers uh, drop down ever so slightly. So hopefully some more units coming in to reinforce. And you can just see how many traders are out here for Nakamura. Up to 14 traders now. And once again yelling out, 
uh, I, I, I didn't hear, quite hear what it said, but something along the lines of what are you doing? Uh, gonna be pushing forward with the Grenadiers. Here they go, the Grenadiers. Looking to get that AoE damage out onto the Bombards. Let's see how they do. You can see just how much damage they're doing spreading on these Bombards. Now moving forward, the Hand Cannons looking to take on these, uh, these Grenadiers mono e mono. But, uh, we've got Crossbows now coming out for ACCM. Villagers as well getting pulled here. Not too sure exactly why. Maybe potentially looking at dropping down another keep. They are indeed dropping down a second or a third or a fourth keep, I think this is, for the game. And now Nakamura really trying to push in and finish this one off. We really see the power of Delhi moving in here. I'd love to see uh, just a couple more elephants out from him really try and push in. Finish this one off. We've got plenty more units coming in here. A, a random mosque just chilling out in the middle as well. I want to see the rally point pushed up. But uh, Bombard's now on the back line. Looking like they're going to get taken out. There's a clock tower Bombard here. For anybody wondering what that is, that is a much stronger Bombard than normal. Take a look at the, the stat difference between these two. 576 HP. 950. Huge difference between these two. So that is the Chinese Bombard strength right there. Now, Nakamura really looking to push in, but there are just so many keeps, so many defensive units here. Grenadiers continuing to reinforce. Having a very decent time. Villagers healing up this keep. And now we see Bombard versus, uh, Bombard versus War Elephant. And it seems like War Elephants actually do relatively effectively against Clock Tower Bombards, it seems. Uh, so there's, uh, there's actually quite a fair bit of damage that's getting pushed out onto that now. Probably going to be going down, getting chased down by a couple of those Grenadiers. The, the keep just sort of finishing it off right there. But I, I really do like this combination of hand cannons combined with war elephants combined with bombards. I think this is definitely the right late game composition that you want to be going. D does a lot of tanking. You have all of your big tanks up the front. But we actually see quite a lot of horsemen now coming out from Nakamura. Elite horsemen, 28 of them. And let's take a look as they move in. We'll get that beautiful cinematic view for you guys as we watch this battle. And now see that you hear those grenadiers going off and it looks like they're diving in. Getting a beautiful surround here. Nakamura looking absolutely amazing. We see those grenadiers just throwing off grenades at point blank range. Looking to do as much damage as they can and they actually look like they're holding on for dear life. A lot of those horsemen going to be going down. Spears in on the action as well but even they are not strong enough for the grenadiers. We see all those grenadiers just throwing away their grenades and Really having a great time. Now a crossbow tower elephant going to be moving in as well. Looking to soak up some damage, but it looks like it's going to be going down, falling on top of a couple of grenadiers. Not managing to take any of them out with it, though. And you see just the true strength of those grenadiers as they manage to hold on for dear life right there. That is an absolutely insane hold. And the question is, how do you deal with grenadiers? And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know. I think the answer might be mangonels, uh, but, you know, watch this space. That, that's that's for sure. They do so much damage. Watch this. Watch this. Boom, baby. <laughs> they do so much damage. It's wild. They are absolute insane in the late game. Uh, that it, it is it is crazy how bad these guys how bad these guys are how how bad how much bad boys these guys are I don't even know what I'm trying to say I'm trying to say that these guys are insane that's what I'm trying to say more grenades getting thrown off onto these villagers over here you can just see how much damage gets done to them they they have got like target not tracing on them but they can predict where the enemy is going to go and throw at the enemy but you can dodge it but they they do unpack very quickly uh, grenadiers probably going to get nerfed. Now, keep in mind, with China, they have an upgrade called Pyrotechnics. So let's take a look over at ACCM. So at their siege, uh, they're not actually built right. Built right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, th yeah. This is this is how many uh, this is how many archery ranges you need. So at your siege workshop, if you're playing the Chinese, you have access to a unique technology. No other Civ has got access to it, and in my opinion, it's it's probably the best unique technology in the game, up there with like fresh food stuffs from the Abyssis. Like that's how good it is. It increases the range of all gunpowder units by 20%. And I say all gunpowder units. So as an example, uh, do we have any bombards over here that we can compare them to? It doesn't look like we've got any bombards over here. So, the, oh, here we go. Bombard. So a bombard's range is 10. Okay, you can see down here, it says attack, uh, 204, 340 versus building, 10 tiles range. Well, the Chinese, with their uh, pyrotechnics upgrade, get 12 tiles of range because they get this upgrade so it's an extra two range but that doesn't just affect bombards 
that affects hand cannons and that affects grenadiers and the grenadier has a 4.8 tile range instead of just a four tile range it's got 4.8 which actually makes it almost as far as a uh as a an archer as a crossbow you can see six tiles of range right there for the crossbow um i'm not sure if there's any true corners in there i don't think there are are there any archers over here uh hand cannoneers are four there's some elite archers here five uh so uh, elite archers actually get outranged by crossbows i didn't know that but now you know uh, but they almost get outranged by grenadiers it's ever so slightly but now we've got ourselves a little bit of a wonder coming down it's a new objective and that is the delhi wonder right there you see it the great palace of agra and isn't she absolutely beautiful look at the size of that thing she is huge now one of the things to note is that your wonder victory has been changed in age of empires 4 it used to be i was going to talk about it let me i'll talk about it later because right now we've got a bit of a bit of a fight nakamura moving in trying to to solidify his position here bombards on the back line gonna be firing off over on these hand cannoneers doing their best to try and soak this up but it actually looks like nakamura is going to be able to try his best to hold on here 51 idle villages at the moment 51 idle villages uh that is some impressive macro if you've got if, if you're a subscriber right now i want to see that macro emote because that is exactly what's going on right now uh, a, a couple of bombards on the back line are going to be doing their best to, to hold on here but unfortunately they only really work against uh those high priority targets that are very high hp uh like the enemy bombards they're not going to do very well against the elite archers unfortunately and uh and now you can see the bombards just doing so well against the enemies these are clock tower bombards got so much more hp able to survive a lot more punishment able to get a lot more damage out trebuchet going to be coming out as well now for accm and beginning to front flood the front line you can see he's actually running out of gold at this point so a little bit of a concern because as i mentioned earlier in the game you do not have access to this trading post when your enemy does so your enemy can now make gold units and you cannot so it is a significant disadvantage to you so how do you play it out what do you do I don't know that's that's th i don't know i got no clue i got no clue what you do uh I, gu I guess you just make trash units like he's doing right now full elite archers is what he looks like he's just making is getting quite comfortable with that you can see he's got all of the upgrades almost all of them rather uh, and gonna be spamming those out trebuchet now gonna be firing down putting a bit of damage onto those bombards but really not a lot the trebuchets do not do a lot of damage uh to the uh to the enemy siege they're more building killers i think would be the best way to say it and you can have a look just how much damage these archers are doing to the bombard barely even scratching them it looks like they're doing one damage a pop over here it's gonna be a while fellas it's gonna be a while uh, but i do think these guys will actually beat the bombards back but now let's talk a little bit more about that wonder so the the wonder has been changed in age of empires 4 it used to be 10 minutes for a wonder victory it is no longer 10 minutes it is now 15 minutes that you must defend your wonder so sacred sites are still 10 minutes but wonders are 15 minutes so nakamura has held his landmark or his wonder for three minutes so far he needs to hold it for another 12 minutes it updates every five seconds there you go uh, now a couple of elephants going to be coming out take a look how much uh how much armor these guys have got eight armor versus 13 attack these guys are soaking more damage than they're taking that's impressive uh, and it's the same for the men at arms eight armor as well you can see they are barely scratched right there so very very unfortunate i, I will just reiterate how unfortunate this uh this trading post placement is uh right now if i was nakamura i would probably have about uh, uh where is his market is here i don't know why we can't actually see how many traders he's got uh but i would be probably having something somewhere upwards of like maybe 60 to 70 traders pop probably and then just 30 villagers on food and that would be more than enough that, that is all you need in the late game and then just spamming out a whole bunch of units but you can see now he's got more elite horsemen going to be coming out here bombards on the back line i would love to see some mangonels from him would really help him out here horsemen going to be running in now connecting with those archers excuse me while I, while I grab a drink and more grenadiers on the back this is exactly what he needs use the trash to soak up the majority of the damage keep the grenadiers in the back line doing all that important damage it's exactly what you want more archers now going to be coming in for accm as well and doing a pretty decent job here but once again we come back to this question how is accm going to be able to push through this when he doesn't have access to gold look at the resources right now stacked up for nakamura and now down towards the south it looks like accm is using his much higher uh, rate of uh, rate of fire i guess on the on the chokunus uh, sorry the uh, in in age of empires 4 that's what they're called and he's going to be coming in down towards the south so this is the consequence of not walling up he did not make any walls down here he said you know what i'm just going to use my own 
I guess I'm going to use my own uh, scariness, my own uh, to defend, and it didn't work. And now ACCM is actually going to be able to push in, prevent trading from happening. You see that there's a couple of um, traders that have gone down, as well as a couple that have gone uh, and garrisoned inside this this uh, this tower. And ACCM really looking to begin the split right now. An outpost going to be going down here uh, for his opponent, Nakamura, uh, doing his best, but unfortunately in a really difficult spot. ACCM sitting at 200 of 200. Compare that to his enemies on 100. This is starting to look like GG for me, I think. E even though he's got nine minutes left on his wonder victory, it's not going to be enough. He, he has spent not enough resources on his defenses. I would have loved to have seen down towards the south here a beautiful wall or two that would have stopped this from happening. But unfortunately, it's too late to apologize. Now, towards the front of the base, we see more and more of these traders going to be going down. Grenadiers doing their best, just really adding insult to injury right there. And you can just hear how loud those units get as we zoom in on them. I love that fact that uh, the units get louder as we get closer. But I'm going to zoom out because that, that's a little bit too loud and I can't yell all day. But now that I can feel it, we're getting closer. Look at the Grenadiers moving in. Oh my god, the Grenadiers just throwing it, throwing Hail Marys down towards the enemy and just doing a great job of, of dealing with this. I would have really loved to have seen some mangonels coming out from Nakamura RTS right here. Uh, it definitely would have been able, or a, a lot more helpful to deal with this, but obviously the consequence of making mangonels, they can get picked off by these clock tower bombards. They've got the longer range, the higher HP. Chinese artillery is infamous in the late game when it gets to these stages. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Grenadier is now going to be focusing down at one bombard. Archer's focusing down the second one doing its best to try and shoot through the barracks that stands in front of it, but unfortunately not doing a whole lot. Eight minutes left for, for Wonder Victory, and now it looks like the trebuchet is going to unload. Is it going for what I think it is? Ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can spot it. There it comes. The first shot now landing in the Great Palace of Agra, and ACCM looks like he's destined to take down that Great Palace because he's not happy with it. He doesn't think it's that great. In fact, he thinks it's to be quite honest with you, he thinks it's a little bit disgusting and it needs to be gotten rid of. And that's exactly what he's looking to do now. ACCM in a great position here. Going to be having to defend his siege. If he doesn't defend it, he's going to be in a difficult spot. There is a distinct lack of military production out here right now for Nakamura. He's down to 58 villages, only 23 units, and ACCM really pushing through with his trash at this point. I asked the question earlier, what does he do without his lack of gold? And it looks like he's just said, you know what? We're just going to go with elite archers. That seems to be the way to do it. Has he started to trade himself? I don't see any market. I don't see any traders that are out here on the map. He could begin potentially sending in that trader as well. He looks like he's actually very keen on taking this down. You can really see the time that it takes. We're only up, we're only halfway through this one to victory right now. If if this was before, uh, before the change, we would be at about two minutes out from this one to victory. So you can see why it was so important to change it. Really need to balance that. We see that the Great Palace of Agra is going to be going down here. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. And Nakamura is left wonderless in this game of Age of Empires 4 as Delhi looks to put on the last remaining hold that it can in this game down towards the south of the base. You can see that there are farms, but there are just no villages on them because this keep this keep reigns supreme over this land. And ACCM looks like he's looking to finish the game off, really putting in the finishing blow. A lot of grenadiers out here on the front line going to be helping in sieging these buildings. And look how fast they take them down. You can see them just firing off those grenades and just doing so much damage. They're now moving in down towards the farms. And you know what they say? Once the farms are dead, the game is over, my friends. Bombard's now down towards the base as well, looking to get taken out. And there goes the grenadier. And that, my friends, is good game. Well played right there. If you've enjoyed this game, make sure you go and check out Nakamura. I'm going to leave a link in the description to this video to Nakamura's YouTube channel. Go over, give him a follow, give him a subscribe, give him a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.